Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Cinema. I'm your host RJ McCready and for this episode I'm going to be taking you guys back to the year in 2011 to look at the electric punk new wave getaway driver movie Drive with Ryan Gosling. So you know the drill guys, let's have a look at the trailer but before we do that let's fire up that Chevrolet, let's put my driving glasses on, my gloves and get that jacket on and let's check it out so I'll see you guys soon. I drive for you. You give me a time and a place. I give you a five minute window. Anything happens in that five minutes and I'm yours, no matter what. I don't sit in while you're running it down. I don't carry a gun. I drive. So you just moved to LA? No, I've been here for a while. What do you do? I drive for movies. Is that dangerous? It's only part time. You put this kid behind the wheel. There's nothing he can't do. Kid, I want you to meet Mr. Bernie Rose. My hands are a little dirty. So am I. My husband is coming home. Where is he? He's in prison. There's some guys that want me to do a job for him, and I'm not going to do it. What is that you got there? One of those men gave you that? What's the job? When you get your money, his debt's paid. You never go near his family again. <gasps> Did you have any idea there'd be a second car? He said there'd be another car to hold us up. Whose money do I have? I'm gonna tell you something. Anybody finds out we're both dead. That's why this driver's gotta go, Bernie. He's gotta go. Any dreams you have or plans for your future, I think you're gonna have to put that on hold. For the rest of your life, you're gonna be looking over your shoulder. And welcome back guys. So the synopsis for this movie is a mysterious Hollywood stuntman moonlights as a getaway driver and finds himself in trouble when he helps out his neighbor in this action drama. It's got a 100 minute runtime and it's classed as a crime drama. It's also got an R rating. And it's starring Ryan Gosling as the driver, and he was previously in a romantic movie called The Notebook. And after this, he went on to do uh, more recently Blade Runner 2049. It's also starring Callie Mulligan as Irene, and she went on to go and do a movie called The Great Gatsby with Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, Brian Cranston, he plays a character called Shannon and you will know him from a very big hit uh, TV show called Breaking Bad, which has done incredibly well. Uh, Albert Brooks as Bernie Rose, he's the bad guy in this movie. And some of you may know him from a little movie called The Twilight Zone, which was um, a Steven Spielberg movie. And he plays the unfortunate... Uh, passenger in the car at the beginning of that movie with um, Dan Aykroyd and it's that famous scene where he goes do you want to see something really scary so some of you might know it some of you might not if you don't check it out it's iconic um, Oscar Isaacs as standard um, he plays the husband of um, Irene and you've probably seen him more recently in the Star Wars franchise playing the X-Wing pilot and Ron Perlman he's pretty good in everything that he does uh, he plays the character called Nino, he's another bad guy in this film. And I guess we all know him uh, quite famously for playing the main character of Hellboy. And he was also in the Sons of Anarchy whilst he was making this movie as well. So that is some of the cast in this movie. 
The film's got an absolute wicked soundtrack to it. It's one I've got in my car, funny enough. And you've got songs by Gavinsky, which is night cool. You hear a lot of people talking about this one. Um, it goes really well at the beginning of the film when uh, Ryan Gosling is driving the car through the um, streets of LA at night time. And you've also got uh, the song by College, which is a real hero, and it's a really good song. It's just, um, I think the central focus around this song is the Ryan Gosling character, which I'll get into later on. So it's a real retro, new wave, um, punk ethic type of soundtrack, and it goes really well with the film. And uh, I can't rate it enough, to be honest. If you haven't heard it, check it out. And just to mention about this song as well, it's also got a bit of uh, trivia to it. So it's based on the pilot Chesley Sullenberg of the US Airways Flight 1549 when he landed the plane into the Hudson River. And the lyrics in the song refer to him being a real human being and a real hero, which uh, becomes the song's refrain. And the verse of the song which includes him saying that he's rescued 155 people. And it was also turned into a movie by, I think it was Clint Eastwood that directed it and starred Tom Hanks as Sully. And the film was called Sully. So if you haven't seen it, it's another good movie. Go and check it out. So that's what that song is based on. And whilst we're talking about trivia, um, so in preparation for the role, Ryan Gosling restored the 1973 Chevrolet Malibu. It's a beautiful looking car. I wouldn't mind one of those myself, to be honest with you. And he also did um, a large majority of his own stunts for this movie. And I've actually forgot to mention the director for this film. I should have mentioned that at the beginning, but I will mention it now. So it's directed by, I'm trying to pronounce his name, Nicholas Re Winding Refn. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, he was born in Denmark and he made a film called uh, Bron Bronson with Tom Hardy before this. And he also went on to make a horror movie called Neon Demon. And the thing is with this director is that he doesn't actually like cars. Um, he actually failed his driving test eight times. So if you're a movie director out there, guys, and you failed your driving test or anything like that, go and make a film about a, a getaway driver. Go and make a driving movie. But for a guy who doesn't like cars, he does a fantastic job of this movie. But um, what else we got on here? So we got uh, Brian Cranston. He actually got the role because the director was a fan of Breaking Bad. And I'm sure it's because he's also a really good actor as well. Um, Neil Marshall, I mentioned him in Dog Soldiers in the other episode. He was actually going to direct this film. I think he spent a bit of time with it. And they were looking to cast Hugh Jackman as a driver. So it could have been a totally different movie, I think, with um, that director and Hugh Jackman. The romance was inspired by a John Hughes movie, or just John Hughes movies in general, because the uh, director is a fan of him. And the film actually has quite a high body count. It has a body count of 10 in this film. So for a crime drama, it's actually quite violent. And the last thing to mention here is that the film is based on a grim fairy tale. Not, not one in specific, but just grim fairy tale in general within the backdrop of the LA streets. So you've got the driver who is the prince and then you've got the Irene who is the princess and he's trying to rescue her from the bad guys. So that's the general scope of this movie. And whilst we're talking about the grim um, fairy tale setting, it's all the other building block of this movie is it's based on a animal fable, which is evidence throughout the film, especially when you see Ryan Gosling's jacket, which has a scorpion on the back. And that is done on purpose for the film because it's based on a animal fable called the scorpion and the frog. And I've got it right here and I'll just read it out. So it says that the frog agrees to carry the scorpion across the river. The scorpion stings the frog and he says, it's in my nature to sting you, so then they both drown. So you can see how the driver can be seen as the frog, being the Ryan Gosling character, and he drives and carries criminals about, them being the scorpions around in his car. But then he is dragged into the destructive world, so as he's stung, he's leading everybody into the downfall. And as I said, it's on the back of the driver's jacket, so... He is the frog carrying the scorpion on his back, so that's the building block of this film. And as I said, um... I didn't initially see that when I first watched this film, but the more times that you watch it, it's quite evident that it's based on that, and like I say, you've got the grim fairy tale. So, this is more than just a driving movie, it's more than just, say, like The Fast and the Furious. And I think this is where people had mixed reviews of this film going into it in 2011. They probably thought they were going to go and watch a, a fast-paced action movie, getaway driver movie. 
but it's not. It's actually more of an art house movie. But that's no discredit to this film, I don't think, because it's a very clever movie. It's quite quite a deep film, and I would say if you're if you if you're a fan of the Sergio Leone movies, like The Man with No Name, uh, with Clint Eastwood, like the spaghetti westerns, I would say it's more a modern take on that. I mean, I would say that this film is a western as well. So you could see um, Gosling coming into town on his horse, he rescues the girl and he's got to take on the bad guys. So it's, it is a modern day western, that's kind of, that's, that's just my take on it, that's how I see it. And whilst we're on the subject, let's talk about driving movies. I mean, I covered one, of, one in uh, my earlier episodes, uh, Vanishing Point. And I mentioned in there, when you look at the front cover, you're thinking that you're going to get a... Um, a getaway driver movie but then it's not and it can be something else and it's the same with uh, Taxi Driver I would say Gone in 60 Seconds I know that's a remake from the 70s with Nicolas Cage but you know he's got to save his brother and even The Fast and the Furious the first one it's um, a ple- undercover police officer has to take on the cartel so I'm actually quite a big fan of these films um, I think they're, they're, they're done really well and there's always a little bit more than you think is going to happen in these films, which is quite clever. So, I, in general, I'm, I'm a fan of uh, driving movies. But the tre- previous uh, driving movie, which I say would probably pay more of a homage to this, is um, The Driver with Ryan O'Neill. He's a very similar sort of character to um, Ryan Gosling's um, character in this. He's, he's a very quiet, he's very one note. But again, that works um, to a degree. Um, Little little dialogue, it can go a long way with his character. I think that's kind of how I took it. A little bit like Steve McQueen, I guess, um, in his movies, just his face can tell you a thousand words, like in, in expression. And the last thing to mention before we have a look at the movie is that it was made for fifteen million dollars and it made a return of eighty million, so it didn't do too bad at the box office. But let's have a look at this film. So it's based around what I would say four different groups of people so you've got the driver being Ryan Gosling and he's a stunt man and he's a getaway driver by night and makes a bit of money and he works for Shannon um, for Hollywood and Shannon is a mechanic and between them they work as Hollywood stunt men Shannon repairs the cars whilst um, Ryan Gosling drives them and their dream is to become get involved in stock car racing and then you've got Irene and her son Benicio and this is where this is part of the love story this is where Ryan and Gosling gets involved with her because she lives next door to him and then you've got um, her husband with his issues he's come out of jail and he owes money to a character called Cook who has been protecting him whilst he has been in jail and when he comes out of jail, he owes him money. So there's a story which I'll get into there with that. And then you've got Bernie and Nino, who are kind of like small time gangsters, I suppose. They've never made it into the big time, but they want to. Uh, Bernie is a loan shark and Nino runs a Italian restaurant. And he has never been able to rise above the ranks of what they call the East Coast Gangsters, which you don't really see in this film. Um, But you know they're there and they play kind of like an important part part later on. So you've got that going on. That's the main sort of building block of this movie. So then the film starts with Ryan Gosling. I'm going to call him Ryan. I won't just call him the driver. Um, You see him, he's in a hotel room and he's talking on the phone and he's talking to some criminals and he says I'm going to give you a five minute window and you get a shot of his jacket with a scorpion on the back and it goes into the intro of this movie and like I say it's got the um, night call scene in the background it goes really well with this film so a robbery takes place and Gosling manages to get away in the getaway car and then he drives into a basketball match where he disperses and then he gets away and then the next scene is after the next day you see him as the stunt car driver he's dressed up as a police officer so you could think he's a cop but he's not he's a stunt man so after performing the stunt uh, ryan goes home and this is where he meets irene um, in the hallway and 
this is engages in like a relationship with her her car breaks down and he helps her out and they start seeing each other there's nothing serious it's just that he's like spending time with her and you get a nice scene where he's taken uh, Irene and her son out in the uh, 1973 Chevrolet and you've got a nice scene of them going out for the day and you've got the real hero song in the background it's just a really cool scene and this is where you've got the driver you can see he is happy this is where he is happy so they are kind of the film is kind of building on that so he's got two things going on in his life he's making a bit of money as a getaway driver and he's forming a relationship so things are going well for him and then there's another scene where he meets up with Bernie Rose who is a loan shark and he is going to lend money to Shannon so he can pursue the stock car racing and this is where Ryan meets Bernie and it's a, it's a good scene here where he says to him look you know my hands are dirty I can't shake your hand and then Bernie says well my hands are dirty too so it kind of tells you everything about this character and they're a little bit standoffish so at this point this is the only time that these two meet each other until later on in the film so as I said earlier these four groups of characters are starting to group up together to form this one story so then with all this going on You've then got Standard, um, being Irene's husband, he comes out of jail. And you can sort of see the disappointment in the driver's face thinking, oh, I didn't think he was going to come out that early. But he talks to him, he gets on okay with him, but then it turns out that he actually owns money to the people who protected him in jail and they beat him up and they say, if you don't pay the money, which he can't, they're going to come and get your family, they're going to come and kill you, your wife and your child. And this is where Ryan Gosling steps in, he's thinking, I can't allow this to happen, so he agrees to do the getaway for him, he agrees to get involved with a, with a job where he's going to steal some money from a pawn shop, and he says, exactly what he says at the beginning of the movie, I'm going to give you a five minute window, I don't get involved, I don't carry a gun, so he follows that blueprint. So he goes to the pawn shop and things go badly wrong. Standard gets shot, he gets killed. And then there's another car that turns up, which I believe is the East Coast gang, which was going to take him on. So there's like a bit of a double cross here. So everything goes wrong here. Ryan goes back to a motel room and there's a female friend in the car, which I forgot to mention. They go back to the hotel and he, he finds out that there was a double cross there are men who are after him now and what he thought was going to be an easy job an easy getaway driver job just to sort things out has gone massively badly wrong and two hit men turn up uh, the female gets shot and it's quite a, quite a nasty scene actually she gets her head blown off and then Ryan Gosling's character he takes on the two hit men he kills one of them with a curtain rail and he's got blood splattered all over him so you can see his ability of being able to take on people so if everything's spiraling out of control uh, Gosling decides to go and meet Cook and he goes to a strip club and he goes in there armed with a hammer and he walks into the back dressing room of all these naked ladies around him and he's got Cook on the floor and he says to him what's going on and he tells him that the money actually belonged to Nino which is um, Bernie Rose's friend who's lent him the money to do the stock car racing. So this is how the story all connects up. So Gosling kills Cook. Uh, it's quite another brutal scene. So again, you've got another, another kill count in this movie. And to make things worse, his friend Shannon accidentally tells Bernie Rose that he's, he's the get, getaway driver for this job. So now he knows about it and he sent, Bernie Rose sends out a hitman to go and kill Ryan Gosling. Ryan then goes to see Irene at her flat and he gives her a proposition to say look here's the money let's get away together we can try and make a life together and um, get away from all this mess. But then as he's standing by the door he sees a man at the elevator and he clocks that he's a hitman. So. In his criminal world experience, he can obviously spot a hitman from a mile. He goes into the elevator with Irene and he puts her to one side and he stabs the hitman and kills him. And at this point, you can see the, the look of distress on Irene's face, the shock on her face of what's happened. And this is where Ryan knows that he can't go back from this. 
Um, he's had to kill this man to try and save them, but he knows that he's there's no way he can have a future now with Irene. And then to make matters worse, you get a scene where Nino's turning to Ber talking to Bernie, and he says to him that th this money is money that he stole from the East Coast mob. So this is where everything ties up together. All these people are all now involved. And then Bernie uh, or Nino says to Bernie, "I've got to kill Shannon. I've got to. We've now got to." kill the driver, we've got to take care of this mess. So this is where you see the capabilities of Bernie because then he now kills a patron in the restaurant. The guy is just sitting there and he just gets a knife and he just stabs him because he's thinking, well he's heard this conversation. So he gets rid of him and then he pays a visit to Shannon and he tells him what the score is and then he just slashes Shannon's wrist and then he kills him as well. So he is a nasty character as well. So with everything that's gone wrong in this movie, uh, Ryan Gosling's character is left with no choice and his main objective now is not himself but to save Irene and her son because he knows that she, she is going to get killed if he doesn't sort things out. So he goes to visit Nino and Nino is having a party at his restaurant after all of this. And then Ryan follows him after the party in his car and he smashes into his car and he goes onto a beach and he drowns him and that's how he finishes him off. And then he makes a phone call to Bernie and he tells him about the, um, the story which I mentioned earlier about the scorpion and the frog which is quite significant to this film. And he arranges to meet up with him at the restaurant and he says to him, you know, I've got your money and um, he goes outside into the parking lot and as he opens up the um, bonnet of the car to show him the money Bernie then stabs Ryan Gosling in the chest but at the same time Ryan slashes Bernie's throat and leaves him dead on the floor with all the money and this is where you get like the final scene where Ryan's like bleeding to death in the car and he just sort of lay it, sat in the car seat and he's looking back and then this is where you got the song a real hero playing in the background and um, you get him, he starts the car up and he just drives off and it's almost like a, like a cowboy driving into the sunset but he just leaves the money with Bernie, he doesn't take it and I guess you could say you're just left with an open end um, of the movie where he's just driving again it starts like it did at the beginning, he's just driving at night time through the streets of LA and you don't know whether he survives or not, or there is another story to be told. But that's the end of the movie there, guys. So that's it. That is Drive. Um, as I said earlier, it's um, it's more than just a car chase type movie, action movie. It's more of a sort of art house movie with, like I say, with the fairy tale setting, with the, with the animal fable, and all these different groups of people connected to the same story and they all end up together in the end of the movie as it turns out and as I said earlier the thing I came away with now more times I watch this it is it could actually be a western it could actually be set in the old wild west um, with horses instead of cars and all that sort of thing so it's a good film um, if you haven't seen it go check it out if you have seen it I'd actually be interested in your views on it but I did post it on the Facebook page and generally I've got quite a positive response on the film so I think people do generally like this film and I think in time to come if it isn't already happening because <laughs> I feel like 2011 was only yesterday it was actually now sort of nearly 10 years ago I think this type of movie could actually be used for media studies you know people sort of doing film studies and stuff like that they could use this film watch it and you could take little bits away from it so it's quite a clever film so um, all credit to the director and people involved in this film they made quite a good film I think it's actually going to get better as time goes on so there you go that's Drive hope you enjoyed the episode guys that's my bite size review so I will be back soon uh, with another episode and the next film I'm going to be covering is another favourite of mine of recent times and that is King Kong or Kong Skull Island, so we're going to be, I'm going to be taking a look at that. I'm looking forward to having a look at that movie and have a talk about it and do the bite size review on it. But um, for a bit of admin, guys, as I always say, I am a proud member of Legion Podcasts. Please check out all the other shows on there, it's a great little group. And you can find the show, my show, on iTunes and Stitcher. Um, so go check it out. And I've also got a Facebook page, great little group. 
uh, we have some fun on there there's been some really good stuff that's been posted on there so let's keep that going on so there you go guys um, keep it bite sized keep it fun and I will see you guys soon this show then make sure you check out the other great shows on the legion podcast network like cinema psyops cinema beef devour the podcast duncan and Bo come correct exploding heads horror movie podcast friday the 13th get slayed the hell mean power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero go show kill the cast underwater kaiju from outer space jerry hates action legion after dark metal health obsessive cinema discourse Pick Six Movies, the podcast by The Cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. The Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.